G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Before we even begin with today's video, I'd like to present to you, or to give you an enormous thank you for the recent support upon the channel. The channel has basically gone from 40,000 to 42,000 subscribers within uh, a month, and the just sheer growth of the whole channel has become absolutely phenomenal. I have just gotten so many comments, I've gotten so much interaction with all of you guys, and it has been an absolute privilege to uh, just see the sheer volume of comments come through. I, I think over the last week I've had easily over 3,000 comments come to the channel, uh, a lot of them just opinions or you know suggestions or clarity, clarification on information, um, different things that all of you guys have given me, especially information I'm really really grateful for, but even just those of you saying thanks or you know love the video or whatever, uh, it, it really really does make me feel quite special. Not only that, but uh, giving the video likes and comments and stuff like that. All the interactions, of course, feed the algorithm, which has, uh, you know, been a bit mean to me in the past and has also been very good to me in the past. And thank you so much, guys. It, it really means the world to me. So as a sort of, uh, not a prize, but a reward, uh, you guys get to see this lovely gameplay. And now this is not me at my finest. Uh, this is definitely not me at my best. But I am in the German P-47. This is the Hitler Bolt. Now, the Hitler Bolt was actually uh, removed from the game because it's not a real plane. The P-47D was actually never used in uh, the Luftwaffe service. In fact, the Germans did operate a uh, squadron of captured planes. However, the squadron that had those did not have P-47Ds. They had P-47Es which we now have in the game as the uh, Razorback. These were added a few patches ago, and the P-47D was replaced by the captured P-47E. But for those of you who managed to purchase the premium P-47D before, that's now a little rare collectible plane that you have in your possession. And the P-47D, whilst not being as uh, light, I guess, or as interesting, I don't know, I think the P-47E is, is fairly interesting, it seems to me that it is a little bit lighter than the P-47D, uh, albeit a little bit less powerful, and of course at a lower battle rating. The P-47D, this is the D-27 if I am correct, has uh, a fair amount of good capabilities. Now, the D-27 uh, is a little bit lighter than the D-25, and I think it's got some longer wings if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it is one of those planes that does need a lot of discipline, however. It's not something that you can just go in play ridiculously or recklessly, and uh, expect to come out with uh, a fair amount of kills. Now, that that statement, whilst being 99% true, is also partially a lie. You can play this plane recklessly, and if luck is on your side, you can pull out with a, uh, a pretty high kill game. I don't want to say a good game, because in, in my opinion, if you have a good game, that means that you uh, don't take any critical damage, you don't waste your plane like I am going to in this video. So, for those of you that, you know, see all these high kill games on YouTube and go, gee, I wish I could get some of them, I would consider yourself a good pilot if you don't take damage in a match and walk away with a kill or two. For me, that demonstrates that you actually have the skill and you actually know how to properly handle your plane. Those people that throw their planes away in committing to head-ons or last-minute head-ons or ridiculous turn fights against planes that they will never win uh, just proves that they are either extremely frustrated, like I am in this video, or uh, not very experienced or you know very impatient. Playing War Thunder does take a little bit of discipline, and especially with the P-47, you need to display a lot of discipline. It does not turn as well. It is a very, very heavy plane. I think fully loaded. This thing is like 8 tons, which is enormously high for a propeller-driven aircraft. Some jets, uh, especially into the Cold War era, are 10 tons empty, or not quite combat loaded, but they are a lot heavier, and you know, these things have engines that produce 10,000 kilonewtons of, well, was 10,000 kilonewtons or 10,000 uh, LBF of force. So these are, you know, ridiculously powerful and ridiculously heavy, and the P-47 comes in at a weight that is, that is similar. Now, it does have a fairly powerful double wasp engine, but you shouldn't be relying on your turn fighting skills. You should be climbing, getting to altitude, getting above your opponents, and then boom and zooming. The P-47 does not like dogfights. 
However, if you energy fight with this thing, meaning that you gain an energy advantage and slowly work your opponent down to the ground, uh, either with boom and zoom maneuvers, vertical loops, or with a touch of teamwork like you're going to see here, you can actually get some really intense P47 gameplay, and that's exactly what you're going to have here. Now, I did mention that I was frustrated. Now, this match was uh, recorded a couple of days ago, and I was trying to get some footage. I thought, you know what, what, is, what does everyone want to see? Everyone wants to see something a little bit odd. So the P47D is coming right up. Uh, I played that, I played a few other planes, and I had absolutely no luck. I was getting really crappy teams, everyone was dying on me, and uh, it just sort of carried on into the next day of recording. So I went into the P47 one more time as a last-ditch effort, and thought, you know what, screw it. I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm just going to go kill people. I'm, I'm going to be like the, uh, the Doom Slayer. Just absolutely furious. And uh, my first victim here is the P51 tw uh, Cannon Stang. He gets a, uh, a lovely little fire. Uh, one of the things I noticed about fires lately is that they don't really get put out. Well, sorry, they, they do get put out, but they burn for a very, very long time. And they don't do a lot of damage, I noticed. The uh, P51 loses, I think, its tail control uh, and starts to basically plummet to the ground. He puts out his fire, and uh, I noticed that a lot of planes have been putting out fires lately, even jets, which is really, really odd to me. I think that might be a bug. I fucking hope it's a bug, because jet fires should not go out. Speaking of fires that don't go out, that Ki-43 just turned into a ball of flames in a perfectly executed boom and zoom maneuver. Now, I could be going vertical here, uh, but what I decided to do is keep a little bit of speed and uh, put it up into a uh, very slight climb following this uh, Ki-100. Now, the Ki-100 is a bit of an energy fighter, but it can climb sort of to the effectiveness of the P-47. Uh, it's definitely not as fast, but it turns a lot better, and I would argue has uh, better guns equipped for this situation of uh, sort of close in combat. The Ki-100 decides, however, he does not want to go for me and instead wants to go for a uh, friendly. So I'm going to put the plane up into a vertical, storing that speed as altitude. This is really important to do in a P-47. And what I'm going to do now is nose back in on him as the A21A3 takes him out with a beautiful burst of machine gun and cannon fire. The uh, A21 has a fairly formidable uh, frontal armament as well as a very concentrated frontal armament, which means that you don't want to get on the wrong side of an A21. It doesn't have the greatest performance, it's not particularly good at climbing, it's not particularly good at turning, but I'll tell you what, in a wolf pack, like I said in the uh, original video on my channel of the A21, um, or the J21s, they are very, very deadly in a wolf pack. Now, having a look at our team, we're not doing so well. We have a few fighters that are above us, which is a really bad sign, particularly P51s. P51s are a little bit faster, just a shade faster at these sort of middle altitudes, um, and they are miles better at climbing because they just aren't as heavy. They're also a little bit better at turning. So the P-51 really is the formidable enemy, however he's diving on me, which means that I have the opportunity to sort of bleed a little bit of speed, dump a little bit of speed, and try and reverse him. So I go for a little rolling scissors, he doesn't bite, and he commits the... Mm, one of the biggest mistakes that you can possibly make in a boom and zoom aircraft. He loses all of his altitude. Now the P-47 is hella fast in a dive. It does not give up its speed, and because it is so heavy, it just picks it up and holds onto it. Now this P-51 is starting to realize that, and he is just about ready to uh, throw in the towel here. You can see he's put his plane into a turn. This is a massive mistake by the P-51. And now I'm going to follow him up into the vertical, but I'm not going to uh, commit all the way to a turn. I'm going to keep going into uh, a sort of climb here. And the Ki-100 uh, is starting to uh, follow in, but you can see how much energy I've retained in that sort of uh, dive. And uh, the Ki-100 is now going to pitch up for me. So I do the reckless thing and just commit to a head-on. I know that you shouldn't be committing to head-ons, but you know what? I thought I might as well take my chance as a little sort of uh, a little fuck you to the Ki-100. Just because I was a little bit uh, frustrated at that point, I was I was looking for footage and I hadn't gotten it in about a day of recording. So, you know, that would you know logically relate to uh, someone being kind of uh, pissed off, if you will. So, 
Uh, with that done, I'm basically going to figure out my next target. I'm going to pick out this J87, and I know that the A6M5 in the distance there has been strafing ground targets. So chances are he's out of cannon ammo, uh, but more importantly, he's been circling around, and that means that he's been turning and burning his energy, which means that I have a significant energy advantage without even being as high above as he is. The A6M5 does accelerate quite well, but I'll tell you what, if you cannot get above an A6M5 in a P47, you're toast. You might as well bail out of the plane and give him the kill anyway, because you're never going to get away unless you have so much altitude that you can just dive down, chuck away 4,000 meters and just pull away, find another way to climb, or unless you have a bunch of teammates to save you. Now, the... Uh, Teammates that are here to save the B-25 are non-existent, and so I basically have whatever I want to do with this B-25. I set him on fire, and I thought, you know what, that is basically going to be it. He's uh, going to start burning, and that'll be the end of it. Well, no. The fire goes out again. I'm very, very frustrated with fires not going out. Um, although, I do appreciate that most planes will really appreciate having their fires go out. Now, I managed to pilot snipe him, so you can't really recover from that, and the A6M5 has now started to come towards me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dive in on him, and he pulls these weird maneuvers, I don't quite know what it is, uh, and then he cuts underneath my turn. I'm not going to commit to that any more than I need to. I'm going to continue on straight, and then I see a Kai-61 that comes out of nowhere. I don't know where he came from. It's the spotting system being monkey again, uh, and I have no other choice but to go into defensive flying mode. He's he was less than 600 meters away. There was no escaping him. And here I go in a vertical maneuver here. I just don't get onto him. And now I have an A6M5 closing the distance very rapidly. He only spots me at the last minute. I'm just going to commit to a head-on. I managed to critical him and I put the nose down just to realize that the KI-61 is right behind me. The A21 is here to save me, however, and he takes out the Kai-61. Beautiful job to the A21. I cannot get enough of this particular guy. I, I really thank him for the, the work that he did uh, and the fact that he saved me not only once, but he also you know, gave the Galakai 100 a bit of a distraction. Without him, I probably wouldn't have been able to record this video. So mad props to you, Mr. A21, uh, and you'll see kind of what happens with that guy uh, a little bit later. So the A6M5 is doing the clever thing here, using the uh, rock face or the, the wall or whatever it is, or the riverbed if you will uh, to try and hide his uh, hide his plane from me but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my plane up into a vertical and uh, he could have gone for me here but he would have let the A21 escape instead he decides he wants to go for the A21 and uh, this is where he makes his crucial mistake he's basically not got any more energy I'm sitting right behind him I set him on fire now I don't want to shoot the A21 so I have to be really really careful and then just when he uh, gets out of the way of my fire he puts his own fire out, again with the fires. Now, unfortunately, I don't shoot the uh, A6M enough and I run out of ammunition. I'm not really a good aim with 50 cals, I don't really know why, uh, but he crashes into the ground anyway, leaving me with a lovely juicy kill, as well as, uh, I think, an ace to go with that. So, the A21 helped me get an ace. Without him, I would be nowhere. Uh, and unfortunately, I end up having to divert to the uh, little lower airfield here, Sadly, the A21 doesn't make it. Uh, I, I really do feel bad because this guy sort of carried me a little bit. I sort of baited and switched with him. I saved his ass, he saved mine. Uh, and unfortunately, because the P51 decided to go for him and not me, um, and me having no ammo, couldn't help him, I genuinely feel bad. So if you're watching, mate, I'm, I'm genuinely sorry. I feel really fucking awful. So instead, what we're going to do is offer a little dish of revenge. The P-47 is faster, especially since I've come from a dive, and especially since this P-51 has engine troubles. Now, I didn't know this at the time, but this P-51 is a P-51 cannon stang, so he doesn't quite have the uh, low altitude engine power, and I don't think he has the speed in general. The uh, cannon stang is fairly slow, uh, but it does compensate against the P-47D by a little bit of maneuverability. So, Whilst I uh, come up against this guy who is heading back to his airfield, I just want to euthanize him really quick. Uh, yeah, he was he was basically softened up by the P4, the, not the P47, the uh, ME264 who he shot down. So I'm just going to spray a little bit, get a couple of hits, 
get a couple of little nasty things on his plane, set him on fire, and hopefully this fire is going to be fatal. And lo and behold, a fatal fire. Finally. This is not how you play the P-47. You, are, you should not be nearly as reckless as I was. You should be taking a lot more time, being a lot more careful, and whilst you may not be getting crazy six kill games, you certainly won't be putting your plane in jeopardy as much as I did. I got lucky here. I have had games in the P-47 Hitler Bolt where I've just died. I've just been outclimbed, and I go for the dogfight anyway and end up losing. This was one of them where I won, but I do not recommend that people play the Hitler Bolt like this. It is a great plane, it is a rare plane now, um, but unfortunately the P-47D is not a very easy plane to fly. You have to be extremely well disciplined. And whilst that's uh, fun for a lot of people, for me it's not really my cup of tea. I don't understand why you would take it into ground battles as well, but you know what, I'm really not going to complain. This plane, I'm glad to have it. It is a fairly decent plane if you know what you're doing and if you're well disciplined enough. But for me, I think I'd go with a BF-109 or a Fokker Wolf 190. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I sincerely appreciate it. I also appreciate the uh, the battle pass. But uh, all all in all, honestly, it's it's great to have everyone around. It's great to have all the comments. It's great to have all the likes. Thank you very much for feeding the algorithm in the right way. And uh, hopefully we can get to 50,000 within a few months. My goal is to try my best to push for 75,000 subscribers this year. If we can do that, then that would be amazing. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.